Tough night. How are you feeling? Yeah, I think it's a reality check. Um, as you say, you got off to the perfect start. Exactly what you need in a European night. Start fast, get yourself in front, build on it, tune it up. But then from that moment, um, Real Madrid came back into it, scored quite quick, fantastic goal. From then, Liverpool were dominated and outclassed for large periods, periods how, from there. How worrying to concede five Quite extraordinary game of football. How do you even begin to describe what happened out there? Yeah, best with the beginning, it was outstanding. It was us in, in a nutshell. It was perfect, um, exactly how we wanted to play, causing problems all over the place. Um, we're really in the game, super intense start. Um, 2 0 up. Um, I think the whole first half was good, besides the goals. Um, obviously, the, 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 the first goal. We became slightly passive, a bit higher up the pitch already. We were not chasing them where we had to chase them because this is a team. When you let them, when you get passive, this is the, the, the you get punished. We realized in that moment, yeah. And the second goal is, is slapstick. Um, should not happen, can happen. Um, and it's two-two. But you know, the feeling in half time was rather, um, yeah. They probably think we cannot do it again, but um, we can, and we can change five times, and then um, we can keep the rhythm and these kind of things. But then the first situation, pretty much, um, they played a long ball to to Vinicius. He's in that one-one situation. I'm not sure it's a foul, but in the end, he whistles it, and then how we defend that is obviously not okay. That's then the three-two, and <laughs> that doesn't help against a team who is obviously outstandingly good in, in counter attacks. It doesn't help, and um, so we played there in their cards, and could not really get back on track anymore. Um, you need to play a, a game like we played in the first half um, for full 95 minutes. That's possible, but you 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 need to. Um, Get the momentum back, and with the with, after the, we conceded two goals, and with the the um, the third three two, that was uh, exactly the opposite. They became more confident, <laughs> um, and scored. Yeah, great goals. One was deflected, I think, um, and that's how it is. Then it's it's obviously it's a strange one, but yeah, we lost five two, and uh, we, we 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 know that as well. But um, there's a lot for me to take from as well, to be honest. It's intriguing, um, the comment about being passive. Do you think that can sometimes happen when you've gone ahead and started a game so well that it can happen to the players on the pitch? Yeah, yeah, of course it can happen. How sad, not each team uses that then in the manner they do. Um, but I, I, I think in, in a situation they score, we have like five or six players around. <laughs> and no challenge. Um, that's obviously, that cannot happen. Has n that, that, we were passive un until the ball arrived there. And then we obviously was a little bit, take you, I'm there, whatever. That's, um, that, that's then um, how that goal happened. Um, yeah, can happen, but um, should obviously not happen. You can, if, the only way you can make, if you want to um, um, slow down, whatever you want to say, the game a little bit, um, is in possession, you have to keep the ball then. But then we started, obviously, second half especially, we, lo we lost balls in strange moments. So first half, we played in the half spaces sensationally well. Um, in the second half, the wrong players were in the half spaces. We played the ball there, and they they could win it. Then it's a it's a massive challenge to 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 organize the protection, because they leave then Vinicius and and Benzema up front. The centre halves have to be really have to step really into the the, the pitch to 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 block or, or defend Benzema. And Vinicius is pretty much not to defend then because with the speed he has um, and <laughs> he has nothing else to do then and pretty much to, to wait there and then and, and, and just uh, show his skills. And to all at half time, coming out for that second half, the game was still there for the taking, yeah, wasn't absolutely. it? So what was it that changed for them? Did they show their experience out there? Yeah, in, in moments and of course as well, but it was the start. It was, I think it was, the, wasn't it the first ball? First ball they played to play to the left side, which they they, okay, they didn't couldn't do that in in, in a complete um, first half that that simple. Um, so we didn't we didn't go out and and and, and try to 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 defend or attack the the centre half. Was it Kamavigwa? Was it don't know who who played that ball? Maybe maybe Militao. But then it's a one-one situation, and Joey goes on that side. It's fine. And we, I think we defend then the situation in the moment, but then he goes to the free kick. And again, yeah, a free kick can happen. Um, but then this space, yeah, it's not, that's not possible that the players let alone. That's really not possible. But it happened, and that's why we were at the 3-2. And then, how I said, 
then you feel intensity. If you don't get that, then you don't feel intensity, and you just you, you keep going. That's not a problem. But you have to keep the momentum. And there we lost it, um, and didn't get it really back, to be honest. Well, it's only halfway through the tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take something pretty special to turn things yeah. around. However, Liverpool yeah. were written off against Barcelona a few years ago and you managed to do that, but that was at home. Exactly. So is it going to be even more difficult to do it yeah, at Bernabeu? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. But uh, we will go there and we'll play a football game. Now, it's not the best start for it and the best basis for it. We didn't create that tonight. Um, obviously, everyone knows when we saw it tonight how good they are in counter attack if we have to score goals there. Um, and they can, in their own stadium, each single counter attack can, can be the decider. So, it will be a massive challenge. But we have a bit of time until then. We have to play in our Premier League. We have to recover and make sure that we, pick the, that we take the right things from this game. And, um, yeah, and the rest we have, to, we have to learn from as well. Thanks, Jürgen. You're welcome. It is when you concede that many goals and, um, yeah, it went good enough. To, to come here and to manage this crowd, we were walking around up to the studio from our position before on the pitch, all looking at each other going, wow, this place is bouncing, they're up for it. Went 2-0 down and then been able to manage that as well in this cauldron. It, it was, the, the, the size of that job that they, the task they had ahead of them at that period when they went 2-0 down, the experience to manage the game and to get back in, I think I agree with Stevie, they scored at good times, scored quick. But the class in those players, the experienced players and the younger players, the blend that they have on that pitch, I never had them down as being a team that capable to, to, to repeat and win again, but now after that you have to put them in Some, there. Sometimes in football you've got to hold your hand up mm. and say the best team won, you're outclassed, you were dominated, they were better. Uh, in most areas of the pitch, you'd have to say. Uh, they got off to a slow start, but the experience, the reaction was absolutely top class. And we're witnessing here absolute greatness in Modric and Benzema. You know, you're talking about players that are operating on a, on a different level than most. What you have got, though, is a Liverpool team that, that they play in a way that if it crumbles, you know, a good team like Real Madrid can pick them apart. They're so brave, mm. and that's why they're so good. Mm. You know, when they're on, they're on, and they're yeah. impossible to stop. But when it's just not going right, they can be picked apart, and especially against good teams like that. I think what a great thing about this Real Madrid team as well is they have a number of players who can take the ball and take the sting out of the game. Modric for one, Benzema another, Vinicius, Rodrigo now starting to do it. Those players, they give you that little bit of time the and composure. The young kids are doing it. Camavinga's exactly, yeah. doing it. Like he's 20 years old, but he's mm. receiving the ball in, in tight areas like a really mature, experienced player with mm. under pressure. Yeah, fair play, Jordan, coming out and speaking to us after that defeat. Never easy. Um, let's go pitch side because there aren't many people left in Anfield, as you can see. Just some celebrating Real Madrid fans. They don't want to leave. Who can blame them? And Peter Crouch. Look, Peter, Jordan made the point there that they've got to recover from this quickly. And they do, don't they? That's the key here for Jurgen Klopp and his team. Yeah, it's a massive blow for them. Well, the second half was, uh, was incredibly disappointing. You know, Real Madrid blew them away. I think, um, you know, I was right behind the the dugout and behind Jurgen Klopp and I think the third goal was the was the killer really because you can get undone by you know Benzema Modric you know bits of class but from a set piece and um, you know it's quite a simple run to concede that third goal was the was the real killer and Jurgen was incredibly disappointed by that um, and then Real Madrid just just took the game away from Liverpool I thought the boys touched on it in the studio there Camavinga, Modric just have the ability to take the sting out of the game and that's what they did and that's why they proved that they're why they're champions at the minute. Stephen it's easy to say this is Real Madrid European champions and they had a brilliant night what did Liverpool though need to do to understand what went wrong from their perspective this evening? I think what you need to understand is against high class opposition and world class individuals you can't afford to make individual errors um, you've got to defend well from set plays and um, you know to take an advantage there they had to defend an awful lot better than they did tonight they did play well for chunks of the first half they got off to an incredible start obviously the goal that Alisson gives away is disappointing but for me I said at half time okay They've got back into the game, it's a level, and the first half was pretty even. They had both two goal line opportunities, you know, where there was fantastic tackles, Andy Robinson and Carver Hall. So it was very even at half time. Mm. They had to reset, they had to come out in the second half with a, a different mentality. Rio said they'd be aggressive, be on the front foot again, start pressing again. Liverpool come out slow, and they, can, they, they conceded an incredible poor goal from a set piece mm. because you can't all be in one straight line, Jake. You've got to have that set up differently and you've got to defend it like a corner and they didn't. That gave Real Madrid big confidence tonight. 
We'll have a proper look at all of the goals. Um, Peter, just coming back to you for a, for a final question. Look, there's no away goals in the competition this year, but Liverpool are still going to have to go and score four goals in the Bernabeu to beat Real Madrid over 90 minutes. What chance? Uh, no, no, it's a big, big ask. Uh, you can't write them off. Liverpool have come back before, but um, you know the way Real Madrid played tonight, you, you think it's a big, big ask for them. All right. Thanks a lot, Peter. Take care. Um, let's get into the analysis now. I think we should, you know, there's a, there's a lot to look at. Let's go first yeah. of all on the touchscreen. And, you know, this was pure quality from Liverpool. This was almost the best moment. Absolutely. The perfect start. Um, there's three great passes um, within this clip. And first, I, mean, I just want to pose a question to Stevie, actually, because when we see Trent Alexander-Arnold just looking up here and we'll pause it, I just want to show where Cody Gakpo is. And, and we've seen, he's in this place here, but we've seen him and Nunez, Stevie, playing almost opposite to where you would expect them. Nunez on the left side and Gakpo in central. Why do you think they're, they're, they're playing like that? They have done for the last couple of games as well. Yeah, I think uh, Jürgen and his staff, they like to play with a false nine. I, I think Gakpo's suited to play with his back to play more than Nunez. They see Nunez as more of maybe a runner who can yeah. break lines. Uh, maybe he can evolve into a false nine. Firmino's obviously being out injured. I think Gakpo's got that little bit more cleverness where he can receive on the back of the mid to play a little bit more comfortable doing that and then it gives the pace to Salah and Nunez going the other way. Yeah, I mean, and that almost is borne out by, by this goal. You've got Nunez coming and using his pace from the right-hand side. The second brilliant pass in this is uh, by Cechic to outright uh, here as well. Great touch under pressure. And then I think that this is a brilliant overlap. This almost takes the man away and leaves Mo Salah basically with a free pass. And you don't need to give him any time whatsoever and then of course we see a run here across the front man or in between actually but across the front post and it's uh, it's a quite wonderful finish we didn't talk about it in any detail at half time but that was such a good finish um, a confident finish a lad that has split a bit of opinion don't get me wrong I mean I watch him sometimes and I've got my ha head in my hands but sometimes I watch him when he plays on instinct he's yeah, he's raw. I mean, I didn't think he'd be this raw when he came to Liverpool. I thought paying that money, when I watched him here in the Champions League last year, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And he does things that take your breath away. But he is going to have to be coached to be a top player. I mean, the player I'd probably liken him to, not in the same style, but when Didier Drogba came to, this, came to these shores, people laughed at him for the first year or so. His touch was awful. He made a lot of mistakes, but he just got used to this. Guy. And I think that this lad can be similar I think he's really, really raw. He's got to take a lot of coaching, but he's got the, you know, got, got the hallmarks. Of he's got the, the raw player. materials. Raw material. he? He's got, he's got, he's got credentials that, as a defender. His profile is one that you go, you know what? He's going to be a hard day's work. Yeah, yeah. But we don't. He's not. He's not polished. But I think he can get to become that with coaching, as Mike says. Yeah. And look, it's been a challenging season so far for Liverpool. So to see them suddenly two 0 up at home, early doors against Real Madrid. I mean, when when this goal goes in, we're thinking, hold on a minute, this could be their their moment. Yeah, we, we spoke about this one before the game. A couple of people lose the foot and Liverpool uh, pick the ball up. It's a bit of a loose touch. Carvajal doesn't help us keep it with the back pass. Liverpool press front foot, that aggression that we see Liverpool when they're at the best. And it's not an easy finish, but Salah makes it look very easy. Um, what I did like is they went for Real Madrid after the first goal. You know, They, they didn't yeah. believe in, in, in the good start. They went after it. They pressed the goalkeeper. They know he's very left-footed. He makes a mistake and they punish them and make it 2 -0. All looking good, and then Vinicius Junior turns it on. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the best wingers in, in, in the world. He's got to be in the ground up, but he's got to be one of the next in line. The level of, of his performance, how he affected the game today, teasing defenders. And I, what, what I love about him here is he comes in here, watch as he comes in here, teases, and then it's the one two. But this is the area you look at here when you just take that back, sorry. And you have to admire the finish, it is great, but you're going to see Jurgen Klopp, we highlighted it before, talking to the defenders. Joe Gomez is there. It's only a small, small, it's, a, it's not even a yard probably, half a yard. Take a step further to get to him. When you've got teammates around you that are going to cover the spaces, you have to go in there and you have to be aggressive and you have to make sure that you're decisive in that situation. But he has got a small window to play with, and that's what I'm talking about. When you're talking about top, top level players, you can't give them an inch. Some it is finish. a small margin. Yeah, it's almost half a touch, isn't it? If he takes a big touch to get away from Gomez, he's going to get tackled by Fabinho. So it's just almost a little half touch, and he's got that much burst of sp speed that he, you know, he, it's just a touch and, and whip straight away. I mean, it's a brilliant finish, but 
there's nothing there. When you're watching, when you're looking at Liverpool, you're thinking that, that that's fine. They all look fine. Yeah. There can't be a goal from here. But you know these magic players produce magic moments. And then two 0 becomes two one becomes two two very quickly. With your manager's hat on, how frustrating are goals like this? Yeah, obviously extremely frustrating, especially when you you're winning the game two one. Um, you know they get dispossessed in the middle of the pitch. It's a poor pass forward actually. Uh, it should be a simple back pass for Joe and the keeper. Keeper needs to just clear his lines or take a touch away from where the danger's coming from. He doesn't, and um, Liverpool get punished for it. Uh, but the game at this point was was very even. You know, two individual mistakes from both goalkeepers, two wonderful goals, two all. Liverpool had to really reset from this moment, and I don't think they did. Mm. Well, they did the opposite of reset, didn't they? Because they came out for the second half. We were in here talking about what's the message from Jurgen to come out and dominate in the second half, and we weren't long into that second half when. They're three two down. Yeah, and I think the the, the the key element here is that they they treated this free kick like it's a free kick, but the where the position of the ball is here, you've got to treat this like a corner. And you look at it here, I'd be saying if I was in here, you need two players in that area there. Yeah. Two lines there, so it doesn't make it easy for anyone to run across you. And what they end up doing is they stick there, they stay there, they're in they're in they're in a line there across there, and you're thinking to yourself it's easy for, for for forwards or attacking players to get across there. And when you I press play here, the only shirts that move are white shirts, and that's criminal. No anticipation, no one moves. There's statues in there, the red shirts, mm. and there aren't there aren't. There's four bodies, four, four, five white shirts in the box. All the other players are red. The whole team, all Liverpool team in there, they shouldn't they shouldn't get ahead on that. Why the lack of movement then? Explain, just explain that in detail. From Liverpool, well, I Mark think. And Spaces from yeah. starters, aren't they? But the wrong spaces, you know. Normally, you've got a two-player. You've got a, you've got a one line that is your, your your big headers of the board, and you've got t another line of or two or three players. Where are finally, you can buy English football at a very low price. Enjoy Premier League and Champions League full replay matches, as well as analysis shows from Premier League TV, BBC, BT Sports, and Sky Sports. Uncut with full footage. Enjoy weekend reviews, previews, tactical analysis, and more. Join us today at the link in the description below. www.primeshows.net. Kind of obstacles. There'll be players that are just there. They ain't your dominant headers. But it, it wasn't. I, I, I'll even re cue that so you can just see that because Is that I think it's off in the Real Madrid training ground. There's two issues, Jake. They've got one line. Yeah. They're leaving yeah. a lot of space around the six-yard box and someone yeah. doesn't follow the runner from the back post. Mm. So there's two big mistakes as far as I'm concerned. 100%. There's your line that it's we're talking about. It's opportunist, isn't it? It's not, it's not from the training ground, this, right. this is opportunist. They, he's, he's just seen an opportunity there, a massive gap there. In the, in, you know, um, and if you've got two players in that area there, if you had two players where I've highlighted there, Militao doesn't have the space he has to run into because right. Militao comes out of the pack and comes in, comes out like this and scores the goal. But... Again, it's understanding the situation. The Liverpool defenders have made a decision to defend this like a, uh, a wide free kick. That's the wrong decision initially. And then from there, it's a domino effect of, of mistakes. And there it is in the back of the net, 3-2. And then Karim Benzema decides to get involved in proceedings as well, doesn't he? Yeah, listen, he's one of the best players around the 18-yard box I've ever seen in terms of drawing people out as cleverness as one-two play. Knowing when to play the one-two. And um, he's just got abundance of quality and he's one of the best players in the world by a mile. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I mean, Benzema, we can see him here running towards the uh, edge of the box, but how many times have we seen him just do this pulling out type of movement out here? He sees no no reason to to, uh, to go in here. This would be my type of running in, uh, in this type of area here. But he pulls out and he likes pulling out to get that ball to feet. And when the first ball doesn't come, he still likes to drift out and uh, and find that extra space. And I just pause it there. When we when we just have have a look at him there, he's just taking a little look. He's just surveying the area. You can see him having a little look here. And what I really love about this is when he first gets the ball. Obviously, as a centre forward, you you're thinking right. This is the space that you want. You know, in and around here, you want to be getting into this type of space. But Liverpool are so deep. That he's thinking, right, what I now need to do is I need to entice this man, get him out, and then I can have the space in behind him here. So he, he almost just sucks him out, sucks Fabinho out here, 
and plays a little one-two. Look, he takes a touch, he waits, he waits, waits for him to get sucked out of that position. And then, yes, there's a little bit of luck in the goal. Mm. But, I mean, it's... You know what I like about him, I mean, that someone like yourself, it's, it's patience, isn't it? Because, and, and a game understanding, because a lot of coaches will be telling you, you're not getting your goals from outside yeah. the box. And number nine, you've got to be inside the mm. box to get your goals. But he's got that cute awareness of space and people. To be able to like that, you say. I, I love the timing of the one two. Yeah. He absolutely kills for being because you know, he's there, then he's out of the game. That allows him to get the shot off because mm. before that, it's probably one in ten chance, but he makes the goal into a you know a high percentage. Just score. Fabinho's got to go and pl close him down, hasn't he? Otherwise, he takes out his feet and shoots. But as you say, it's the time, it's the little touch, just to suck him out, just to get that space between defence and midfield, and then uh, and then he's in it. And he's but Benzema in. is the most complete number nine. That I, I ever played against and in the game today I think I think we've got great number nines it's around that like Lewandowski and people like that but he is he, every element of his game is eight or above easy so cool and calm wasn't he for 5-2 yeah he, he doesn't play up against defenders he's so good at, at drifting and finding his own space this is a great run by Modric shows great strength great composure it's a fantastic pass by Vinicius but you're expecting him to shoot straight away the class the composure the style, the ability, I mean, you could talk about him all night, he's just a fantastic footballer. I was screaming when that when that when he took when he laid down Allison, I was screaming in it. I mean the other two were silent for obvious reasons, but the class of this guy on his weaker side, that's there's two lads on the on the on the goal line there, it's not an easy finish. And this fella at thirty seven ruled him through the midfield. It's just, it's just, it's what do most strikers do when that ball comes in there? They hit it with the right foot. Yeah, they hit it. Yeah, he's just got so much, so much coolness. And once he does this, he's done. People think, oh, he's done the hard bit. But let me tell you, that's not easy. You got three bodies, you know, on the, on the line there, and he just curls it with his weak foot. I thought Liverpool could have stopped the attack. I mean, mm. Fabinho giving the ball away, bad, and they oh. could have made a yeah, they could have taken a yellow card and, and stopped it at source. But that's uh, that's nitpicking. I mean. Let's just admire what Benzema did. It was total class. Then a bruising night. Is that as difficult a defeat for you to take? Very difficult. Um, <laughs> it's hard to, to sum it up straight after the game. You know, it's mixed feelings. Obviously, disappointment and frustration with the result. Um, but for large parts of the first half, definitely, I felt we performed well. Probably unlucky to go in at half-time level. Um, but we made too many mistakes around the goals especially and when you make mistakes a team like Madrid punish you and they punished us every time tonight. I imagine when you've just come off the pitch it's really hard to, to dissect what happened out there. Do you feel like the goals you conceded were all down to your mistakes? I mean a lot, a lot of to do is their quality as well. You've, we've got quality players everywhere but I think we didn't help ourselves for sure especially the set piece I think um, which I'm not sure was a foul to be honest but um, we didn't defend it well enough and then and then after that there was a few goals yeah we can do better of course um, and, the, and the game went away from us at that point. You conceded five goals at Anfield for the first time ever in the Champions League at Anfield. Is it worrying the amount of goals that the team are shipping at the moment? Well the last two games I think we kept clean sheets didn't we? Prior to that yeah. Um, so it's hard it, it is difficult to come here and and, and and speak because uh, yes they have a lot of quality and we knew that and when you're not 100% defending the Punisher like they have done um, and we, we caused ourselves a little bit of problems at, at, at times um, but yeah it's a tough one to take in the end. Going 2-0 up so early on in the game there must have been a feeling that you you were on top in the match and you could go on and, and take a lead to the Bernabeu for the second leg. So at half time, when when they've pulled it back and it's two all, what was the feeling then going into the second half? I thought we were unlucky to go in at half time level, definitely, but we still played a good first half. I felt um, I felt as though we we're, were on top. Um, we created some good chances. I think there was a big chance at, at two nil. A little bit of a scuffle on the line. Um, I think if that goes in, um, it's a it's a big moment in the match, but. Um, you know, that's this, the first goal, yes, we can probably block it, but it's a great finish. Um, individual brilliance again. Second goal, obviously, it's a mistake, but um, that, then things can happen. And then the third one, I think, we'll be really disappointed with the set piece. So um, at that point, that's, that's when the game went away from us. But performance level, I think, first half was, was very good. 
Um, and then second half obviously wasn't as good and, and we got punished. Halfway through the tie, how do you begin to pick yourselves up going into that second leg now? Well, I think it's still a few weeks away, isn't it? So, if, yes, we can analyse now and think about it now, but we've got to move on quickly. Um, we've got games coming in the, in the Premier League over the next few weeks before then, so we need to concentrate that uh, on, on that and, um, and cross this bridge when we're coming up.